Hi everyone. Let's keep exploring Halloween together. For this episode, we're going to explore some costumes because that's a really fun part about Halloween. But before we get started um, with costumes, we're going to talk about something called dress forms. And so dress forms are, if, if you were a tailor or a fashion designer or somebody who sews for a living, you would probably have one of these, you know, in large scale. Um, and what this is, is this is an approximation. This is a, um, a version of somebody's body. And so if you can imagine that's the neck up there and those are the shoulders and then it comes down to a pretty small waist and then flares out again for hips. And so this is just one kind of dress form and depending on what kind of costume or clothing or um, outfits that you'd be making, you would probably have different sized dress forms or mannequins um, to be designing your clothes on. And so when we're designing costumes, sure, we could draw pictures or we could go to the internet and we could find a whole bunch of examples, but it can be really fun to make your own dress form. So whether or not that's your own body, whether or not that's an, imagina uh, an imagined body, maybe it's just a puppet that we want to dress up or a doll or a sculpture, whatever it's going to be, by creating a form, and it doesn't have to look like this. This is just, this looks very much like what you would see if you were to go to a tailor. Um, but we're going to make some different dress forms that we can try um, making costumes um, and fitting them on so that we can check out what our costumes look like before we uh, have to go out and maybe buy the pieces or uh, sew the pieces, and we can make we can make a plan on a form like this. So, for example, if I wanted to be a wizard this year, I could start out by taking my little um, toilet tube form, which we'll do we'll do one of these today, and I use some uh, pa uh, pipe cleaner here so that those could be arms, but maybe they're also wands. Maybe my arms are to the side and it's a scarf. You can use your imagination and you can try things out small like this in what we call prototyping, right? So before the thing is made real, we can make it small and we can check it out here. And that's great because then we're able to uh, find out whether or not something works. We can figure out um, maybe what colors we want to try because we can try different colors really easily just by coloring them in. Um, it can be fun just to create some of these things and be thinking like this. Um, and also it gives you an example of something that you can show someone else. So before you do all that hard work, before you go out and make a costume, if you're not sure about something, you can get somebody else's opinion um, to make sure that you are creating a costume that is um, doable, right? Maybe somebody you, you're going to show they have more experience sewing or um, finding those kind of things um, by showing them a picture of it, right? Or showing them a, an example of it, they can go, oh, I know exactly what you're looking for. They can also look at it and go, oh, I have a bit more information um, than you do about the character that you're trying to make a costume about. Um, and um, I have some suggestions so that you can be more respectful um, when you're doing this, this costume. Remember how we, one of the things that we are practicing at Explorers is respect. And so that's all good ways you're going to make a dress form. Okay. So um, for the dress form, I have suggested that you go and find yourself some cardboard. And as you know, I do love the recycling bin. And so whatever size of cardboard you can find, it doesn't matter if it's creased, it doesn't matter um, if it's got tears in it, doesn't matter if you've ripped it, just some cardboard, something a little bit more firm that we can, uh, we can make our base out of. Um, if you have some paper tubes, this is always great. I do love paper tool, tubes, so whether that's um, the toilet paper ones, whether that's the paper towel ones, um, whether there's uh, sometimes um, plastic wrap will come on a tube like this. Sometimes they're a little bit firmer, but it depending on what you have to cut, you know, you could have a paper roll. This one's, this one's great. Um, <clears throat> some paper. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect paper. It could be ripped paper. It could have paper that has writing on the back of it. Just some, just some paper that we can try uh, to uh, make some marks on. Some scissors. 
Um, so whatever size, just to be able to cut the cardboard. You know I like to rip paper, but um, cardboard is a little bit easier if you have scissors. Um, some mark making tools. And remember, a mark making tool is anything that makes a mark on another surface. So whether that's a pen, whether that's a marker, whether that's a pencil crayon, whether that's a crayon, any kind of mark making tool that you can find, that's great. I've also put crayons down here um, because a little bit later, I think what we're going to do is, is we're going to try and do some um, textures. And so if you can find some crayons, maybe not for this session, but for uh, if you're going to stay with us all day for another session, um, see if you can find some crayons and some tape. And so I've just got this green tape here, but if you have clear tape or you have masking tape, uh, if you have paper tape, all of that is just fine. Okay, so let's explore making some dress forms together. And don't forget, all the things that I'm showing you right now are just a couple of different ways that you can do it. If you have a different idea of how to do um, a dress form, of how to do a base, of how to do an effigy, of how to do a version of a body or a figure that you can dress up, then go for it. And if you don't want to make something, you could also go find a toy or a doll, and you could use that and use your imagination to dress it up as well, right? So whether or not you're using a ready-made, something that is already made, or you're making something along with me, find something that we can, we can dress up. Okay, so I'm gonna move these a little bit out of the way so we have a bit more room to make. Move my sandwich board. Move my paper mache dress form over. I made that for something um, for a project last year and that's why I had that there. Um, and you can go ahead and you can make a dress form like that if you feel like you really wanna challenge yourself. This was just all paper mache. This was a bunch of um, paper that I had ripped up and used um, some flour paste to make. So if you know how to paper mache, you can could, you could make one of those too. Okay, so uh, there are two ways we could do a dress form. We could do something that's more 3D, so like the paper tube of my mini host here. You can see I've already cut up a tube. Or we can do a figure that's kind of flat um, and then um, put, put different uh, clothing on it using tabs. So what I mean by that is um, whether or not you want to do, actually I'll do two, whether or not you want to do a stick figure, right? Maybe you're you're not feeling super confident about drawing something that has a lot of uh, dimension to it. There is no reason why you couldn't draw a stick figure like this. And if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to draw your figure so that it was in a mobility device, maybe sitting down, Right? You could do it, you could do it on its side. But if you wanted to do it face forward as well, right? You could have it so that it's sitting down, right? Your figure is sitting down. Here I'm gonna just put um, some wheels at the side. There you go. Right? So there's no reason why you couldn't draw a different body still using a um, uh, a stick, a stick body, right? A, a stick person. Um, I just, I just did this one because I want to do a nice, uh, um, sorry, uh, vertical, right? So using up lots of space here because that's what my cardboard was. But if you have a nice square space, then why not? Right? Take up that space. And however you want your body to be represented, right? Maybe the stick person doesn't feel like it represents your body. Maybe that's, um, you can't imagine yourself as a stick person, so you want to have a bit more um, dimension. Here, I'm just going to make that a little thicker so you can see it, so that when we're cutting it, it's easier. And there is my stick person. So that's one way. And then for the other one, the other one I actually am going to do, um, sit it, seated in a mobility device. But this one, I'm going to add a bit more dimension to it. So I'm going to start by uh, putting a chair in the background because um, this figure is going to use uh, a wheelchair. That's their mobility device. So here's the side of the wheel. Um, and then it comes down to the wheel. goes around like that. There we go. So I have to think a little bit more about perspective when I'm drawing 
um, like this, right, with more 2D. This is this is very flat. I haven't got any um, body weight. I don't have any shoulders. I don't have um, any torso, any belly. I have a really long neck, right? So this is very much a simple icon of a body, and it could be any body. Whereas this body over here that I'm drawing is going to have a bit more dimension. And so I've still got my head, but now I want to have shoulders and maybe the arms will come out to the sides, but sitting on the side of the chair, right? I'm just going to fill it in as I go along. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just have a bit more dimension. So same thing, arms coming out to the side. See, I've got a, I've gone a little bit shorter over here. That's called foreshortening. So it, it means that um, because these arms are coming out towards us, right? As far as the picture is concerned, that's where the, the chair is coming out, right? We know that a chair doesn't sit flat or you fall right through when you went to sit on it. That's why this part of the arm I drew a little bit smaller. But it doesn't have to be perfect. Your figure doesn't have to look perfect for what we're doing because we're not doing a drawing. We're just doing something to help us come up with our costume. Okay, so there's a body. And then there is a bum that's sitting on the seat. And then the legs come out and same thing, foreshortened because it's coming towards me. And then the legs come back down and then feet are out here. Right, so it's gonna look a little bit different because this figure is sitting down compared to this figure who's sitting up. And you know what, I kind of forgot my neck. And so I want there to be a neck. There we go. And because we're going to be cutting this out, because this is not for keeps, because this is just for fun, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can make lines, accidental lines, right? And just color them in afterwards. We're going to cut those out. No problem. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you can do this multiple times, right? If you've got cardboard from the uh, recycling bin, who cares if you have to use multiple pieces, right? Go find some more recycling. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so there's my seated figure. You see how there's a little bit more weight, right? There's a little bit more thickness to all of these limbs that this figure didn't have. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut these out so that I can dress them. For this one, I'm actually going to cut away from the mobility device, from, from the uh, wheelchair, because um, I'm not going to dress the wheelchair in this case. But if later on, when we were making our costumes, we decided that we wanted our mobility device um, to be a part of it, we wanted to decorate it as part of our costume, then we could make another dress form of the chair that would sit behind this figure. But for now, I'm just going to isolate. I'm just going to cut out that form. What does your form look like? Which way did you decide? Did you make a stick person? Did you draw yourself sitting or standing up? Did you draw yourself simple like a stick person? So very little, um, very little mass, very little weight to your lines, maybe skinny little um, forms. Maybe you only have one arm or maybe you decided to, uh, your fingers were really important to your costume and so you've got fingers on yours. So your, your stick figure can look completely different from mine and that's okay. And if you decide you don't wanna do a figure of yourself, you just wanna draw up a mannequin, um, a figure to dress up and try out different costumes, then that's fun too. You can just explore different body shapes um, and sizes. Um, and ways of depicting it. So sitting down or standing up, right? So however you want your figure to be made is up to you. So you're probably cutting a little bit closer um, for your mannequin. I'm just going, I'm just leaving a little edge so you can still see the cardboard for, for mine. 
but you can cut yours really, really close. So there we go. That was a really fast way of drawing um, a dress form. And you know what, for this one, this one I'm gonna cut really close. I'm not gonna leave any cardboard on the outside of it. And if you're using scissors, right, make sure you go slow. I have a lot of experience cutting and working with my hands. And so I feel pretty confident going fast, but even going fast, I could make a mistake. And so I'm keeping my hands, right, really far away from the blade as I'm cutting. I'm taking my time. I'm going a little, I might be going a little bit faster than you just because of my experience, but there's no reason to rush, right? You can be making all day. You can come back to this. Maybe you've just got time to make your dress form today and then you make your costume another day. We've got a whole week before Halloween, right? And whether or not you're going outside or, or you're just gonna make your costume for fun, maybe you're gonna plan your costume for next year. Maybe you and your friends are all going to make little stick puppets of yourself and you can play pretend that you're going uh, trick-or-treating or you could all create your figures and then take little pictures of all of your characters, right? And you can pretend that um, you're all hanging out at a party while still being safe and socially distancing, right? There's lots of, there's lots of cool reasons why uh, making a dress form like this would be, um, would be fun for Halloween, not just for planning um, a real costume, but just for fun. Okay, there we go. So I've made those two flat stick forms. Move my this cardboard out of the way, just so I've got a bit more room. There we go. And then I said we could also make um, a tube. And so for this one, what I did was I took one of my one of my tubes. And here I'm going to make this one a bit shorter. There we go. And I have some strong hands, so I was able to cut through that. My hands were really clear. Um, you might want to get an adult um, or one of your grown-ups to help you cut through um, the tube if you're having trouble with it. Another way that you can cut through the tube is that you don't even have to cut it in half right away. You could just cut it um, in half that way and then bring your scissors over to the side, right? There's lots of different ways to do the same thing. You don't have to be copying me exact, exactly to be able to do the same thing. So here, I don't even have to cut this side. I cut it in half, but this side works great. And so that's the tube, right, that I have cut in half. And now I've got this piece here. And I want to make it so that there's this stand that I can glue onto a base. And so I cut a circle because I have a compass that lets me cut in a circle, but you could cut a square. In fact, I'm gonna do that because then we can have an example. So I, I got another piece of cardboard here. There we go. And then my base just going to be a really big square. There we go. And so that's, that's what my figure is going to be on, right? And so you can see this host, right? This figure has the circle at the bottom and that this one's going to have a big square at the bottom. And all of this is just so that it can sit up, it can sit up straight. Um, okay, so working with this cardboard tube, how are you going to get it to stick onto the page? Well, one way is the way that I'm gonna show you right now, which is, uh, this is actually a good idea, is to fold the base first so that you've got kind of a guideline of where you're going to cut to. There you go. And so that's the bottom of the figure there. That crease is where I folded. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some small little cuts just up to where I folded that crease. And if you go over a little, that's okay. The crease is going to help us um, keep it so that it's nice and flat and, uh, and in the same direction. But yeah, don't worry if it goes over a little bit. This is not for keeps. This is just for fun. This is just for planning and prototyping, right? And you can make lots of these. You don't have to make just one. You could make um, 
equivalents. You could make the same thing over and over again, but change just one thing so you can see how it's a little different. So you see now I've got all these pieces at the bottom. And what that does is that gives me something to glue or tape onto my surface that will help my figure stand back up again. Okay, so before, before we glue anything, what we wanna do is we want to add to our, uh, our person. And so you can see here, what I did was, I imagined that the face was up at the top here. I put a little bit of hair, but basically because the tube is open, boop, at the top, right? You can draw as much or as little hair as you want on your dress form. Okay, and so for this one, I'm just gonna go really simple. I'm just gonna go happy face, two ears, some hair, and you can draw it however you want, right? If you wanna have long hair, if you wanna have short hair. Okay, I'm gonna leave a little bit of space for the neck. And then I'm going to put a shirt on them. And then I'm going to draw some arms that came down. There we go. And then these are the pants down here. I'm gonna make a little space for where the legs would be. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up to that spot so that the parts where the legs are gonna be already have a gap. There we go. Okay. So there is, there are two examples of the paper roll. So now what you can do is you can take that tape and if you have some really strong glue, uh, if one of your grown-ups has access to a glue gun, you could also re-glue the back of it. But I think tape works fine. And remember, again, because this is just a prototype, because we're just trying something out, it doesn't have to be perfect. And the more of these you make, the better they're gonna be every time. So I totally encourage you to make multiples, to, to do them over and over again, because you'll, you'll learn something new every time. If you don't have really strong tape, you also don't have to put it on the inside like you saw I did. You could put it on the outside. Again, because this isn't perfect, because this isn't something for keeps, there's no reason why you couldn't put tape right onto the figure. And if you're using um, masking tape or green tape like me, you can kind of see the lines that you already drew and you could drew them again, sorry, drew them, draw them again if you wanted. There you go. And so that part is green, whatever. We can just use our imaginations, right? There you go. So that's really strongly on there. And there's my figure. Okay, so because I cut the front out here, I didn't do it on this one. And you see on this, on my mini host, I just drew a line where the pant legs are. Did I draw it on the back? Yep, I did, there. There's the pant leg there. For this one, I didn't even do it. So maybe this figure is wearing a skirt. Maybe they only have one leg. Maybe we can just use our imaginations. But this one, I cut it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crush my figure, keeping my hands well away from where I'm gonna cut. There we go. And I'm not being too precious. I, I accidentally cut up there and that's okay, right? Because this is just a dress form. This is just for tries. Okay, so one last thing to do now that I've got my, my new figure and I could color it in if I want, but because this is just a base that I'm going to dress up, it's the costume that I care about, not the dress form. So this doesn't have to be perfect. This is just an idea to give me um, a base. So just like this one, I didn't have perfect ears I don't have a perfect neck ratio. I don't have any hands on it and that's okay. That's just to give me structure to build my costume on. Okay, oh, I said I was gonna use that one for this one and then I was gonna use a square one for this one. There we go. Okay, so now <clears throat> I said that if you had some glue um, or if you had access to a glue gun and one of your grownups can, um, can do that, then that's great. But for this, I'm just gonna keep using tape because that's what I had. 
So I'm going to go around the outside. And I went over the edge and that's okay because the, uh, the base is also not important. It's all about what we're going to put on for the costume. There we go. If you wanted to, you could have also cut up um, into your roll and um, got the arms to stick out. You can cut two holes in the side and you could um, put a paper straw through it so that it has arms, like the stick man that comes out to the side. If you wanted to put arms on your paper roll um, dress form, how would you do it? Can you think of different ways? There's no one right way. There's lots of different ways that you could figure it out. And if you can come up with a way, I'd love to hear it. You can just comment. You could send us an email. You could take a picture of what you figured out. I'd love to see it. Okay, maybe one more piece of tape after this. There you go. You see, I'm just sticking it down so that my figure doesn't move around. And there we go, right? So there's my figure on a square. There's a form on a circle. There's a stick person that we can use as a dress form. And there is a seated um, figure with a bit more weight, a bit more uh, dimension to them sitting down that we can dress as well. Okay, so those are some ways that we can do a dress form. You can also go online and you can look up um, dress up dolls and they'll, they'll have um, forms that you can just print out online if you have access to a printer. But all of these ways means that you don't have to have a printer and you don't have to have um, um, access to the internet beyond watching the show right now. And you can just look around your house and see what you have available or the classroom, community center, wherever you're making. Um, and you can see what you can find. And maybe you won't use a, a paper tube. Maybe you'll use something else. And it's up to you. There is no wrong or right way to make a dress form. 